Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 23 days to go, so just over three weeks to go into your GCSE Maths exam. And today we're going to focus on the topic of iteration. So I really like this topic because I like the style of the questions and I just like doing them. But in this video, we're going to look at how to approach iteration questions. So at times I'm going to give you some questions to do yourself as well. So feel free to press pause and try those iteration questions. So we're going to go for iterations in today's video. Feel free to press pause to try some yourself. And then at the end, I'll talk about where the practice questions are. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at iteration. So in this video, we're going to look at some iteration questions. So I'm going to give you some iteration questions. Feel free to press pause and to try them yourself, and then I'll go through them. So first question says, use the iteration formula, and we've got this iteration formula, xn plus 1 equals 5 subtract 2 over xn. And we've been told to start with x0 equals 4 and to find x1, x2, and x3. So feel free to press pause now to work this out. Okay, so we've got this iteration formula, which is xn plus 1 equals 5 subtract 2 over xn. So in other words, to define the next value of n, you're going to do 5 subtract 2 over the previous value of n. So if we wanted to find x1, we're going to do x1 would be equal to 5 subtract 2 over x0. Now we know x0 is equal to 4, so it'll be 5 subtract 2 over, and instead of x0, we're going to use 4, so 2 over 4. And then we can use our calculator for this, or actually I can just actually see 2 over 4 is a half, or 0.5, and 5 take where half is equal to 4.5. So that means that x1 will be equal to 4.5. And if you type that into your calculator, 5 subtract 2 over 4, then that would give you 4.5. Okay, so we found x1, now we want to find x2. So to find the next value of x, we're going to do x2 would be equal to 5 subtract 2 over x1, the previous value of n. Now we know that x1 is equal to 4.5, so that's going to be 5 subtract 2 over 4.5. So we're going to do this in our calculator, 5 subtract 2 over 4.5. So we're going to do 5 subtract and then 2 over 4.5 and that's equal to 41 ninths or as a decimal number that would be equal to 4.5 reoccurring so 4.5555555 and so on so we've got x1 and x2 now we just need to find x3 so to find x3 we'd have x3 would be equal to 5 subtract 2 over x2 we now know the value for x2 is equal to 4.55555 and so on so that means we've got 5 subtract 2 over 4.5 reoccurring now we just need to type this into our calculator. Now this is on my calculator display, so I'm just going to press 5 subtract 2 over answers, and that gives me an answer of 187 41 or as a decimal number, 4.560975561 and so on. And that's it. So that's our values for x1 x2 and x3 actually just write them here x1 equals 4.5 x2 is equal to 4.5555 and so on and x3 is equal to 4.5609756 and so on and that's it and if you got those well done Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question has got three parts, part A, part B, and part C. Feel free to press pause now to try these questions. Okay, so let's start off with part A. Part A, we've been asked to show that the equation x squared plus 3x subtract 1 equals 0 can be rearranged to give x equals a third subtract x squared over 3. So we need to rearrange this to get this. Now, whenever I look at this, the first thing that I notice is we've got these thirds. So it looks like we've divided by 3 at some point. So I'm actually going to make this x a subject here. I'm going to make this x a subject. So if I was to make this x a subject, the first thing I would do is I would add 1 to both sides of the equation. So on the left-hand side, I'd get x squared plus 3x. And then on the right-hand side, I'd get that's equal to 1. Now, I want to make this x a subject, so I want to get rid of this x squared. So let's take away x squared and take away x squared. So then we'd have 3x on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we'd have 1 subtract x squared. And then finally, I want to get rid of this 3, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So on the left-hand side, I would get x, and on the right-hand side, I'd have 1 over 3, or a third, subtract, and then I'd have x squared over 3, so x squared over 3. And that's it. We've rearranged this equation to give us this x equals a third, subtract x squared over 3. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next part, part B. So part B says, starting with x0 equals 0, use the iteration formula xn plus 1 is equal to a third subtract xn squared over 3. So that's obviously what we've just uh, rearranged it to give us, but we've obviously got our xn plus 1 and our xn. And we've been asked to use it three times to find x1, x2, and x3. So if you have tried this, fantastic. If you haven't, press pause now and try this question. Okay, so we want to find x1 to begin with, so we're going to get x1 is equal to a third subtract x0 squared over 3. Now we know that x0 is equal to 0, so that's going to mean that x1 is equal to a third subtract 0 squared, so 0 squared over 3. 0 squared is 0, divided by 3 is 0, so we're then just going to get that x1 is equal to a third, so x1 is equal to a third. And again, if you've got a calculator, you could type that in and it would give you the answer of a third. 
Okay, now we need to find x2. So let's then find x2. So x2, the next value of x is equal to a third. Subtract the previous value of x, that's going to be x1 squared over 3. Now at this point, because I've already got a third on my calculator display, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a third, subtract the answer squared over 3, because I've already got a third as the answer, and that'll give us our x2. So whenever I press equals, I get that x2 is equal to 8 twenty-sevenths, or as a decimal number, that would be equal to 0 0.296 reoccurring, so 0 0.296, 296, 296, and so on. So we've got the x2. Now finally, we need to find x3, so we're going to then find that our next value of x, x3, would be equal to a third, subtract the previous value of x, x2 squared, over three. Now what's fantastic at this point is I've already got this typed into my calculator display so I can actually at this point because I've got an answer of 0 0.296296 is already on my calculator I can actually just press equals at this point and it gives me an answer of 665 over 2187 or as a decimal number that's equal to x3 would be equal to 0 0.3040695 and so on and that's it we'll find our values for x1, x2 and x3 and if you got those well done. And let's have a look at part C, our last part. It says explain the relationship between the values of x1, x2 and x3, so those values we've just found, and the equation x squared plus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And that's the equation that we were given at the beginning of the question. Now those values of x1, x2 and x3, they're approximations to a solution or roots of this equation. And they're increasingly accurate. If you find x4, it'll be even more accurate. x5 will be even more accurate and so on. So x1, x2 and x3 are approximations to one of the solutions of this equation. So let's write that. And that's it. I've just said that x1, x2 and x3 are increasingly accurate approximations to one of the solutions or to a solution of x squared plus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So we've got another question, again, with three parts, part A, part B, and part C. Feel free to press pause now to work out the answers to part A, part B, and part C. Okay, so let's have a look at part A. Part A says, show that the equation 5x subtract x squared equals 2 has got a solution between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So we need to show there's a solution in between these values. Now, whenever you want to show there's a solution between two particular values, what you want to do is you want to get the equation equal 0, and then you want to show there's a change of sign whenever you substitute in your two values of x. So let's do that. So let's make this equation equal 0. So let's take away 2 from both sides. So whenever we take away 2 from the left-hand side, we'd get 5x minus x squared minus 2. And on the right hand side, we then just get that equal to zero. So we've now got our equation equals zero. We've got 5x minus x squared minus 2 equals zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in both these values for x, x equals zero and x equals one. We're going to substitute in both of those values into this left hand side. And if whenever you substitute in one value and then the other value, if you find there's a change of sign, so in other words, one of them's a positive and one of them's a negative, then in between these two values, you must have zero at some particular point. And that means there must be a solution. So let's do that. So let's look at our 5x minus x squared minus 2. And let's let x equals 0 and then we'll let x equals 1 and we'll hopefully find one's a positive and one's a negative and then that means there's a change in sign in between them and because this is a continuous function where there's no gaps and no asymptotes you know it's not like the tan graph where um, there's certain values that would give you an error so what we're going to know is that there'd have to be a solution in between these values so whenever x equals 0 we'd have 5 times 0 so that's 0 and then we'd have take away 0 squared that's going to be take away 0 and then we've got take away 2 and that's equal to negative 2 so whenever x equals 0 5x minus x squared minus 2 is equal to negative 2. So that's a negative. Now if we let x equals 1, we're going to get whenever x equal to 1, we'd have 5 times 1, which is 5, take away 1 squared, so it's going to be taken away 1, because 1 squared is 1, and then take away 2. That's equal to 2. So here we've got that whenever x is equal to 0, this is equal to negative 2. And whenever we get x equal to 1, we get this is equal to 2. One's positive, one's negative, so this is a change of sign. So it must be equal to 0 in between these two particular values of x. So that means it must be a solution, because there's a change of sign. So let's write that. And I've just written down, as it change of sign between x equals 0 and x equals 1, there must be a solution between them. So there must be a solution. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at part B. So part B says, show the equation 5x minus x squared equals 2 can be rearranged to give x equals the square root of 5x minus 2. So if you've done that, fantastic. If not, press pause now and try this now. So we want to make x a subject, and if we have a look here, we've got the square root, so I'm going to make this x a subject. So if I'm going to make this x a subject here, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to add x squared to both sides. So if I add x squared to both sides to begin with, because it's got minus x squared, I'm going to add x squared to both sides so that it's now a positive x squared. So on the left-hand side, we'll get 5x, and on the right-hand side, we'll have 2 plus x squared, so 2 plus x squared. 
Now we want to make this x a subject because it's got the square root. So we're going to take away 2 from both sides. So take away 2 and take away 2. So on the left hand side we've got 5x minus 2. Now that looks familiar already. And on the right hand side we're just going to be left with x squared. And now we're just going to square root both sides. So we're going to get that x is equal to the square root of 5x minus 2. And that's it. And if you got that well done. Okay let's have a look at our next part. Part C. So part C says use x0 equals 1. Use the iteration formula xn plus 1 equals the square root of 5x xn subtract 2 and we're to use it three times to find an approximate solution to 5x minus x squared equals 2. Okay so if you've done that fantastic if not press pause now and try this. Okay, so we've been given x0 equals 1, and when you want to use this iteration formula, so that means the next value of x, so x1 will be equal to the square root of 5 times x0 subtract 2, replacing this with x1 and this with x0. Now we know that x0 is equal to 1, so that's going to be x1 will be equal to 5 times 1, so 5 times 1, and then we've got subtract 2. So we're going to do the square root of 5 times 1 subtract 2. Well, 5 times 1 is 5, subtract 2 is 3. So that means that x1 is equal to the square root of 3. And that's the value of x1 as a third, or if you've worked it out as a decimal, that would be 1.73205088. Okay, so that's what I've got on my calculator display for the value of x1. Okay, so that's x1. We've used this iteration formula once. Now let's use it again to find x2. So x2 will be equal to the square root of 5 times x1 take away 2. So the square root of 5 times x1 take away 2. Now it's going to be, now we've got this as our answer on our calculator display. So I'm going to replace this with answer. So I'm going to do the square root. So I'm going to get x2 is equal to the square root of 5 times answer subtract 2. So if I do the square root of 5 times answer take away 2 and press equals that gives me that x2 is equal to 2.5807467798 okay so we've now got a value for x2 well x3 will be equal to the square root of 5 times x2 take away 2 so I just need to replace the x2 with this now the great thing is I've already got this on my calculator display and our value for answer is this so I can just press equals again and if I press equals again I get 3.3020825 and that's it. So we've used the iteration formula three times and we've got the x3 is equal to 3.30208 and so on. And that's it. And that's it. So in today's video, we've looked at iteration. I highly recommend you try the practice questions today because I said, you know, the, the, the more practice you on a topic like iteration, the better. Also, as I said in the video, it's important to know how to use your calculator whenever you do iteration questions. So that's why the practice questions might be quite useful because it just gives you some more practice on how to use your calculator whenever you're doing these iteration questions because it can be quite useful to how to do these iteration questions using your calculator. And as I said, there's 23 days to go, so keep up the hard work. You're doing incredibly well. Also, keep up that little and often approach. There's things like your foundation plus your higher and your higher plus five a days. Um, use your notes and also just be quizzing yourself on different things and pass papers at this point doing lots and lots of pass papers as you're going through those pass papers remember to you know any question that you get wrong you know perhaps if you get a question wrong on surds or histograms go back to court maths watch the revision videos on those topics and do the practice questions and the textbook exercises on those topics just to make sure you're confident on it. so don't, you know, if you're in your past papers and you get something wrong try and do something about it you know target those topics you know if you've got something wrong on Pythagoras, you know, you know, recap Pythagoras, make sure you're fresh on it and you know, do some more questions until you're confident with it. So keep up the hard work and I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock for the next video. Cheers. Bye.